Welcome everybody, welcome to Claydesk. My name is Syed, and today I'm gonna to talk about how AWS pricing works. And I'm also gonna demonstrate the AWS pricing calculator. So you under, would understand how, uh, which services would cost you, how much, especially if you like to, let's say, add up additional EC2 instances, you'd be able to know and get a rough estimate or pretty close estimate as to what it will cost you. So the Amazon Web Services helps you move faster reduce IT costs and attain global scale, though, you know, through the broad set of global compute, storage, database, analytics, application, and many other deployment services. And that's really what AWS can do for you. It's a pay as you go services and tools that you can use. Now, AWS has these services to help you build sophisticated applications. Doesn't matter whether it's a simple app that you're deploying or involves many complexities it gives you the flexibility, the resiliency, the scalability, and of course, the reliability. So whether you're looking for compute power, you're looking for database power, storage, for example, content delivery, or any functionality for your software app, AWS has the solution for you. And of course, it's pay as you go. So I'm gonna talk about and demonstrate, of course, within the AWS calculator once we get there. But before I do, let's take a look at the key principles of AWS pricing, and this is good for uh, knowledge this is good for exam purposes especially if you're studying for let's say one of the AWS certification exams understanding these key principles not a whole lot just to, you know a few minutes I'm going to spend before I jump into the calculator and demonstrate the price estimates the you know key principles although pricing models vary across services it's really important to review key principles and best practices that are applicable within the AWS ecosystem. So let's understand the fundamentals of pricing first. There are basically three fundamental drivers of cost as far as AWS compute, storage, and outbound data transfer. These basically characteristics are somewhat depending on the AWS product itself and the pricing model that you choose. But in many instances, for example, or in most cases rather, there is no change or there is no charge for inbound data transfer or for data transfer between other AWS services within the same region. So regions are important. So if you're in the Ohio region, you want to make sure that you stay and get the price estimate for that region. Now, there are some exceptions, of course. So be sure to verify data transfer rates before beginning. Make sure you choose and select the region wisely. The outbound data transfer is aggregated across services and, you know, of course, then charged at an outbound data transfer rate accordingly. Now, this charge appears on your monthly statement once you get the bill as AWS data transfer out, and that's the heading that you're gonna find this, you know, invoice. The more data you transfer, the less you pay per gigabyte, okay? So, for example, for compute resources, you pay hourly from the time you launch the resource until the time you terminate it, unless you have made a reservation for which the cost is agreed upon beforehand. So, if you reserve the EC2 instance for one year, boom, then you have a dedicated price for that. All right, the second principle important is start early with cost optimization. So, the cloud allows all of us to trade fixed expenses such as data you know centers or our own hardware physical servers that we have you know the cloud basically you know shies away from that right for variable expenses so now your servers are up in the cloud with aws you know managed by aws and all you have to do is just you know maybe spin up a server and only pay for what you use that's you know very powerful and because of the economies of scale, the variable expenses are much lower than what you would pay to do it yourself. So whether you started in the cloud or you're just getting started with migration journey to the cloud, for example, AWS, of course, has all these solutions to help you manage and optimize your spending dollars. All right, next principle that you need to ensure, maximize the power of flexibility. So AWS services are priced independently, transparently, and available on demand. So you can choose to pay exactly what you need. You may also choose to save money through a reservation model, for example, by paying for services as, for example, as needed basis, right? You can then redirect the focus on innovation, focus on your core business practices, 
reducing procurement complexity so you don't have to buy hardware and manage hardware and hire the team to you know manage and upgrade or do you know server patches and whatnot right so let aws handle all for you so that's really the maximizing the power of flexibility and finally of course use the right pricing model for the job this is important principle too because aws offers several pricing models depending on the product you need to understand what these pricing models are so for example you can have on-demand instances which simply let you pay for compute or database capacity by the hour or second minimum of 60 seconds depending on which instance you run with no long-term commitment or upfront payments the other option is savings plan that you can choose these are flexible pricing models that allow lower prices on Amazon EC2 Lambda, for example, or Fargate usage in exchange for a commitment to a consistent amount of usage. And of course, this is also measured you know, in dollars per hour for a one or three year term. This could be a good exam question, right? Yeah. All right, the next is spot instances that you can actually use. And these are Amazon EC2 pricing mechanism that let you request spare computing capacity with no upfront commitment and at a discounted hourly rate up to 90 percent of the demand price and finally you have the reservations right you can provide you with the ability to receive a greater discount up to 75 percent by paying for capacity ahead of time so that's really the key principles i wanted to cover that you need to understand as far as how aws pricing works let's dive in of course let's take a look at the tutorial i'm going to demonstrate using the aws pricing calculator and then we'll, we'll you know take a look at different services and what they're going to cost if you were to use those services all right so what you can do here is of course just go to calculator.aws or you can just do a simple google search and you will land on this page now this is the aws pricing calculator which allows you to simply estimate the cost for your architecture solution so it's not just for example one tool or services that it's going to give you the price for you have a solution if you want to use multiple services this is exactly what you would need it will allow you to give you pretty much a good estimate as to what it will cost you so let's dive right in and take a look at um, and, and sort of like how it works just briefly the AWS pricing calculator estimates the cost of AWS products and services you simply add the services then you configure the services based on your solution that or your architecture that you're about to implement and then it's going to give you the estimate total so it's straightforward all you need to do is just simply click on create estimate and then first thing is of course select the service as to which service you like to choose or create an estimate for and there are many many services of course there's a whole list for example I'm gonna pick and choose I'm gonna pick one for example the common is Amazon EC2 instance right so EC2 offers the broadest and deepest compute platform with choice of processors storage networking operating systems and so on so click on configure Amazon EC2 it brings you to this page there are a couple of ways you can do this remember first things first the region like I said earlier it's important to understand which region you're in you have to pick the correct region okay so uh, we'll go by the default US East Ohio if you need to choose any other region just simply scroll through the list and select your own region and then there's options to either create a quick estimate or an advanced estimate the only difference is of course the advanced estimate will give you additional options so I'm going to show you both first let's go with a quick estimate which is by default is already checked here are the EC2 instance specifications that you need to provide for example what operating system will you be using so if you're using Linux or if you're using let's say um, an AMI or Amazon machine image based on Linux you can use this option which is by default or you can use Windows Server Windows Server standard enterprise and there's a whole list of different servers you can choose or operating systems okay so we'll leave it as Linux for example and then enter the minimum requirements for each instance or you can search instance by name so here you can specify CPUs if you are into video editing or streaming or heavy-duty stuff then you select GPUs right for example and then number of processors so either is 4 6 12 whatever so we're gonna go with 8 processor server 
and then the memory is by default 16 you can you know change it to 32 gigabytes of memory and again that depends on your own solution your own application that needs this requirement right all right you can also add a requirement in other words add additional requirements by clicking on the add requirement button and here's based on your inputs this is the lowest cost ec2 instance so they are recommending of course the t4g.2x large which is on demand hourly cost they give you the cost which is 0.2688 it has eight cpus and of course the one year standard reserved hourly cost is 0.1686 so of course definitely is cheaper right so if you sort of like book the instance for one year it's going to be cheaper than on demand so keep in mind so if you're thinking your software solution your architecture or your you know your requirements are such that you're going to you know span it out to one year then yes that would be a cheaper option to go with the one year standard reserve hourly cost with a 32 gig memory and up to 5 gigabit network performance and here's the quantity of ec2 instances so it's just one right here if you need multiple servers right ec2 instance is a virtual server if you need one or two you can specify here and then the utilization and then utilization per month hours per day week however you want to configure it okay so enter the expected usage of ec2 instances right here which is you know utilization is 100 right you can of course lower it if you need to and then a couple of more options before it gives you the estimate is the pricing strategy once again we talked about this whether you want to reserve it for one year three years no upfront partial upfront or all upfront payments again all upfront is much cheaper and three-year reservations of course cheaper as well and so on okay just like standard you know whatever you go buy stuff that's how it is right all right so the pricing model is ec2 uh, instant savings plan or you can select on-demand instances or you can select any one of these options so we'll stick with the ec2 instant savings plan and here's finally the storage which is by default the general purpose ssd storage it's the amount is 30 gigs you can of course change it to terabyte also if you need to have uh, 30 terabytes of uh, ssd storage sure you can use that too but as of right now that by selecting all these options your monthly average bill would be 126 dollars approximately okay now that's based on the options you selected and likewise if i for example change the storage amount from 30 to let's say 300 gigabytes yeah your monthly bill is going to be 153 dollars so it's fairly straightforward now let's take a look at the advanced uh, estimate quickly once i choose the advanced estimate going back above here i have of course the same operating system linux but now i can specify the workload so based on my application that's going to be running on this server what am i expecting where i'm expecting a constant usage maybe i have subscribers who just log in once and then you know they use certain services on my application then that would be an option or daily spike traffic i can specify which days are heavier which days are you know less traffic on my website so that's really or my app that's the option you can select here or it's weekly spike traffic so it's really very very you know you know almost like narrowing down based on your traffic so let's say our daily spike traffic is from monday through friday is the pattern that we selected okay and then of course the baseline is one this is the minimum amount of instances that you need as a baseline for your workload and for the peak instances or the peak traffic which is of course this you know the topmost area of this chart right here you can specify hey i need maybe two instances at this point in time because there is so much traffic i don't want the server to be you know down for example and the duration of peak hours and minutes so enter the amount of days hours and minutes your instances are running at peak so it's eight and then 30. you can also add additional patterns and here are the ec2 instances that you can also select based on you know number of cpus memory and of course network performance so this is very very powerful the advanced option for pricing estimate and likewise pricing model 
this is standard we saw this earlier so we leave it as ec2 instance savings plan and then the reservation option this is also uh, pretty much we've covered this uh, previously as well one year or three year options okay and then the storage straightforward again that depends on uh, the only additional option here is the 2x daily snapshot frequency you can increase that to 3x or four times or six times and take a snapshot of your storage okay all right and then inbound data transfer you can specify those as well because based on your traffic based on your app you would know exactly how much traffic you're getting um, in or out and then finally it gives you the estimate of your ec2 which is 13 dollars and 90 cents so not bad not bad at all so based on these options this is just one service guys right likewise if i were to go back into the calculator create an estimate you'll notice you can configure uh, these estimates for api gateway appflow athena you name it cloudfront cloudwatch ec2 dynamo db you know elastic block store and there are many many services a whole list so just navigate to calculator.aws and check it out so in summary we talked about the key principles of course of how aws pricing works and then you know the actual calculator i demonstrated fairly straightforward but important because uh, the, the the objective here is to understand your model right your application or your requirement based on that then you would go ahead and figure or configure the or get the estimates many many times we just you know spin up an ec2 instances without knowing whether it's going to serve us well or not right so get to know your application get to know your data then go get the price estimate hope this helps let me know if you have any questions post your questions thank you so much for watching my name is syed and i'll see you guys in the next video